Hey everyone, Tin Man here, playing a Constructed Gauntlet with my Mono Red deck. Uh, we're up against a Red Black uh, Tinker Lich. This is probably similar to the deck that uh, Petrify took to the second place of the Seed Story Cup this past weekend. At least that's the assumption I'll be working on until proven otherwise. Alright, so we have a similar flop uh, with Bristleback, Axe, and Legion Commander. Luckily, our... Our axe is in front of Legion Commander, which is the good trade here. Axe will win this trade over two turns, whereas um, everything else is pretty equal. This Curvin's a little unfortunate, but eh, nothing we can do about it. I'd rather take four extra damage than have four damage on Bristleback at this moment. Ooh, they've got a very good draw with a double Bronze Legionnaire while we don't have any of our uh, early plays. And so we'll just trade across here. They have triple Bronze Sorry. Legionnaire, okay. <laughs> Seems legit. <laughs> Would love to have a draw like that, but unfortunately we do not. So we're definitely behind in the early game here. You know, obviously with having three such uh, um, early game creeps is going to make it hard to uh, to establish a good foothold early. The, this cre these creep bonds are unfortunate too because we are not going to have a good spot to play our Stonehall Elite in front of a melee creep. Uh, because, you know, be, they'll be clogged up here. Um, so I think I'm just going to default to fighting in lane 1. That's pretty much what you always want to do. And the fact that he put Lich in lane 3 means there's more opportunity for me to potentially have Stonehall Elite uh, available. Yeah. If they hadn't put the Lich there, then all our creeps would be blocked up evenly. So now at least we've got a spot for Stonehall. Uh, I mean, we could use it on any other lane to trade with a Bronze Legionnaire, but it just makes more sense to put it down here in lane 3. Um, other than that, we're just uh, passing right back because we got nothing to play. Drew a lot of our late game stuff, the Primal Roar and Time of Triumph. Duel. Oh. That Curvin was really unfortunate, huh? So, I think I'd rather just... Um, do I want to play it here or wait till lane 3? If I play it here, it's almost certainly going to work, unless he has a second duel. Whereas if I wait till lane 3, he could potentially cast, like, pick off or something with the Lich. So we'll just play it here and get the, the guaranteed uh, value. The Smash of their defenses are not at their best against this matchup. And hopefully we can just fully trade off here. Hopefully it doesn't have anything else to mess us up. Okay, so now we can get into turn three with some gold in our pockets, and we can, you know, hopefully turn this into a favorable situation. So we're gonna buy our cheap health items, the stone hall cloaks, and regular cloaks, uh, traveler's cloak. So now we can give health to, to everybody here. Unfortunately, Tide on her does not fight well against these bronze legionnaires in every lane. But neither do the melee creeps. Um, I find it hard to believe Tinker would go into mid lane. Because then it would just die to Axe. Uh, he may think it would trade with Axe, but then we can put a cloak on him. Maybe if they have a cloak as well, they'll put it in mid lane. I think we can just put Tidehunter in lane 3 uh, and, and stem the bleeding there. Alright, he's going in lane 1. I guess that makes sense trying to kill the uh, Stonehall Elite. But luckily... Creep jumps in front of the Stone Hall Elite instead. Tidon is really good at just holding down a lane on his own. Um, you know, he'll, he'll be a blocker for a couple of turns until he can finally uh, use his Ravage ability to, to stun the lane up. And that buys us basically an extra turn in the late game. So, we don't have a, an amazing play. Let's just start with the Stone Hall Cloak on Beastmaster. That's a pretty safe first play to see what's going on. They've got a Red Mist Pillager. Okay, it's a good thing we waited, so now we can trade our Mercenary Exiles for the Red Mist Pillager. And they actually live, so that's nice. Town Portal Scroll the Axe. Uh, I guess we just take initiative in the next lane. We don't have a great play in next lane. We're just going to play a Cloak on Axe. Uh, but then, since we've got this Legion Standard Bearer, he can go in front of this Creep here and let Tide trade up into the uh, Bronze Legionnaire. So that'll help to, to regain some control. 
All right, let's just put a Stonehold Cloak on Axe. Uh, we'll, we'll save the Traveler's Cloak probably for, um, you know, one of our two red heroes next turn. Uh, Tidehunter doesn't really need it. Uh, luckily, our play does involve a 4-drop, <laughs> so this minus mana doesn't really hurt us that much. That's the cool part about these mono-red decks is that we really don't have too many um, high impactful 5-cost cards, a lot of 4-cost and a lot of 6-cost, so denying mana on, on mana 5 is not quite as impactful as you'd think. Uh, Tidehunter's taking a lot, but he's probably not going to take the same chunk next turn, so he'll probably survive next turn even without a Traveler's Cloak. And I'd rather make sure I have one for one of my lower health heroes, like a uh, Legion Commander. Uh, I think I'll buy a full heal here. Uh, that would be useful if, if something big jumps in front of Axe, uh, like a Bristleback with a weapon or something. And we already have one other cloak, and, and like I said, we don't really need it this turn. We don't really need, need a second one, that is. So we've got six mana now. Unfortunately, we don't have any of our uh, Marrowfell Brawlers. Uh, but hopefully we'll find one. Those are our, our premier six drop. I think I'd like Bristle back into mid lane so that he can munch on either of these two creeps, and then probably Legion Commander in lane one. Um, I guess that's possible if he just gets hit by the Tinker shot. But that Tinker shot might go into the Mercenary Exiles, so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Lane 3 is, is pretty much a wash right now, but we don't really have too much pressure on, on anything. And they don't really have pressure on us, so let's just fight over the uh, lanes that matter right now. Luckily Tinker's curving into this creep. And we did not draw any of our of our 6 drops, or any of our creeps really. Um, I think I'm inclined to just activate uh, Beastmaster's ability. Get a chunk on Tinker. And then pass. Uh, this is fine because I'm still surviving the fight. If he plays like a, a weapon or something, maybe we full heal it? Not sure. There's a Stone Hall Elite here. Cannot save that, unfortunately. So just have to do it. Don't have any gold. Ah, oh, that's really nice. So we played a duel. So now our full heal will get full value. Can heal him up for 17. <laughs> Jeez. That was a good fountain flask. I don't really need initiative anywhere else. Um, yeah, I'm not going to use a Kraken shell just yet. We're just going to put a Traveler's Cloak on. Well, I guess it was supposed to go on Legion Commander, but she wasn't taking too much damage. Man, no, this, is a, this is a terrible hand. No Berserker's Call, no Marrowfell Brawler, no nothing. They're just going to pass here? I'm content to just pass. This lane, because we're the way they're blocking and the way the creeps have, have laid out, is probably going to be a lost lane. Um, we're probably going to lose our tower here, but we maybe can attack back and, and trade both ways, but I'm not positive. We'll have to see. Uh, let's just pass here. Uh, opponent's got nothing. We got nothing. Um, we're behind on damage there, but it's not that bad. Do I want a town portal scroll? Probably. If I want to bail somebody out of mid lane, I, I could wait for a blink dagger, but then that might be a little too late. If I have to wait till next turn. So I might want to bail out this uh, bristle back out of mid lane. Or this axe, depending on how it all shakes out here. And now we've got our powerful plays online. We've got Primal Roars available. We've got, yeah, now we draw the Marrowfell Brawlers. Chain Frost. All right, that's not nearly as scary whenever we've got all this armor on somebody like Stonehall Elite. Uh, hmm. Just passes. So I could just take this as is, but then I lose my Beastmaster. I think I'd rather just bring Beastmaster. Definitely play the cloak on her. Ready and then probably roar. Town Portal the Beastmaster. Or Primal Roar? 
No, I, I wanted this creep to die. Or can I just deal 10? Hmm. I definitely want a Primal Roar in mid, but I've got two of them. But I won't have initiative. So... Perhaps I just play Marrowfell Brawler and then regain initiative? That seems pretty good. Let's put a Marrowfell Brawler seconds remaining. here. Eat the Bronze Legionnaire. I actually don't want to Town Portal this Bristle back because he's going to Primal Roar. So I will bring back this uh, Beastmaster. So Town Portal this, Kraken Shell. Oh. Oh. That, that's annoying because I could through my Kraken Shell. But I'm glad he used it here and not on the, the stun we're going to set out in mid lane. So, oh well. We'll take a chunk from this bristle back, but we'll have the Beastmaster to redeploy it at full health again, which is, what, 20 health? <laughs> Jeez. Alright. And we'll have a creep advantage. We'll, we'll have two big creeps to his one big creep. We're lower on life total, though, but that shouldn't be too big of an issue. So it's Primal Roar. They can't cast anything in this lane now. Come on, Axe. Go to the left. Nice. Always wanted to go to the left, because basically Axe now skips his attack step this round, uh, because he went left instead of to the right My gonna heal that up but it doesn't change anything that might have been a mistake it was over yeah <laughs> they uh, did not count properly <laughs> with the emote uh, re acknowledging their mistake uh, we've got a lot of gold so I can actually play mercenary exiles and pump it for seven and I can ravage so let's just do that so that lich can't cast anything or do anything and it keeps our standard bearer alive and then pump it for seven. Just kill the Lich, regain some of that gold we just spent, get a chunk onto the tower, and life is pretty good right now. Now that we got to our, our more expensive cards. Unfortunately, can't grab this Blink Dagger, but that's okay. Our heroes are pretty well distributed the way we want. Um, we don't have anything respawning, so I don't think we ever even need a heal on anybody. Fifteen seconds remaining. Um... I'll pick it up though, because I think we're gonna get some some hero kills this turn. I think we might. Uh, I guess we need that, that to curve. Maybe we don't get a hero kill this turn. Uh, I think I just go into lane one and time of triumph, just one guy, or maybe primal roar, and just keep their axe bouncing around depending on where he lands. Okay, so primal roar is off the table, but. Is Time of Triumph still reasonable? God, this Stonehall lead is just soloing Axe. <laughs> He's been growing, growing, growing over the turns. They have their own Mercenary uh, Exiles. That cannot quite kill us. They can pump it for four. Um, I'm kind of inclined to just duel that before it could get out of hand before they could pump it and it saves us some points of damage I doubt we're going to kill this tower at any point Ooh, the red mist pillager I was going to say maybe we can stall out and, and keep our tower alive but maybe I acted a little too hasty with that uh with that duel. Well, I guess we just need two blockers there, really. We're going to have one more with the Call of the Wild, and then maybe we just put Legion Commander in there. And if we get a creep spawn, it's it's all good. Okay, I'm not that concerned. Uh, is this the lane to Time of Triumph? I think so. Hits two heroes, uses our mana efficiently, and... Oh god, I didn't realize how low we are on that. Alright, so we're, we're playing with fire here, you know, being at 5 and 6. But, I think I actually might just healing cell. So, nah, we're going to kill this next turn no matter what, even if we don't have the pump. Alright, so... Let's see. Is Jasper Dagger's any good? 
I don't think so. I think we just want an extra card draw. Really. Uh, no creeps in mid lane. Maybe it's just easier to defend mid. Give up on lane one right now. I think so. If they commit anybody into lane one, they can probably get it. And if they go like four man mid, maybe Primal Roar can get us out of this. This is going to be tough though. 15 seconds remaining. Yeah, I think we just try to defend mid. We've got better odds there. Oh, and they're going to still try to defend lane three. Interesting. So Primal Roar can probably disrupt that. And then now I'm thinking maybe we can get a... We can work with like an enough magic somewhere. To actually get the win here. So this lane's gone. But if I just enough... Or if I just... Uh, if I enough magic to them, it doesn't really help. Right? So I just time of triumph mid, and then he like lasers something, and then I reclaim initiative, and then enough magic lane three, or then primal roar lane three rather. That seems really good. So let's just let this lane go down while I still have initiative. Oh no, we don't, I don't have initiative. Oh crap, I didn't realize. I forgot Chain Frost. And eh, there's nothing really he can do to stop this. He doesn't have like Coup de Gras in this deck, so. Sure, disarm. But now I. Time of Triumph. Gets the siege damage through. We'll give Axe some more armor. I guess it doesn't matter. He has got Pierce. And then Primal Roar lane 3. And I think that gets there, right? Because that clears these two guys out. That unlocks 11 more points. Yeah. Or 12 or 13 more because this creep goes straight ahead. I think that's a win. Barely. <laughs> See, if they had put more creeps into mid lane, or more heroes into mid lane, like if they just four stacked like mid, I don't think I could win. Maybe I could not die on lane one. So they needed to kind of put a red or a black hero in lane one in order to cast Chain Frost. But all in all, it looks like we, uh, we got him. Might as well just draw a card. All right, they don't have anything else. Just give Legion Commander armor, pass, Let's see them try initiative, and then we see the massive power of Primal Roar to win games. That's one of the big appeals of going mono red is that you're always going to have lots of options for where to Primal Roar. And that's the game. GG. Alright, so we're 1-0 in this gauntlet. Uh, I love this mono red deck, and... Uh, even though we had a terrible start where they had the triple bronze legionnaires, we were still able to pull it out. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.